Thanks for the introduction, and is the microphone working? Okay. Hello? Yes, uh, uh, so today I'm going to introduce uh, hardware assisted data flow isolation. This is a joint work with Georgia Tech and the Seoul National University. So in this work, our focusing is memory corruption vulnerabilities. And due to the popularity of C and C++ pro programs, and especially in daily use large programs like kernels or browsers, uh, memory corruption vulnerabilities is very common. At the same time, memory corruption vulnerability is uh, highly exploitable. They can usually lead to arbitrary memory uh, code execution. So for this reason, they are one of the most widely exploited uh, uh, vulnerability type. And according to the statistic from Microsoft, uh, memory corruption vulnerability is uh, uh, do the dominant uh, root cause for remote code execution on Windows. So to understand how memory corruption vulnerabilities can be exploited and uh, prevented, let's use this very simple Stack Overflow example as a run example. As we can see, uh, the program at the left side uh, has a, buffer, a, a Stack Overflow vulnerability, and uh, the corresponding assembly is on the bottom. So at line two, we allocate a new buffer, and uh, at line three, we push the return address on the stack. At line six, when we call the uh, string copy, if the passing argument is large enough, we can overflow the buffer and uh, compromise the return address. And finally, if attacker can control the return address, they can leverage it to launch a, a variety of different kind of attack, including like code injection and the return order to programming. So uh, there are many uh, defense mechanisms being proposed to defense this kind of attack. For example, the most widely used one is called stack guard or stack cookie, which insert a canary value between the buffer and the return address. So if uh, overflow happens, this canary will be corrupted and uh, then attack will be detected. Unfortunately, uh, if uh, attackers can directly write to any given value uh, address, or if there is an information leak vulnerability, this defense mechanism can be easily bypassed. Alternatively, we can also try to encrypt the return address. So even if attacker can compromise this return address, they cannot control the decrypted value. The challenge here is how to do key management. Basically, if we ever reuse the encryption key, then uh, the encryption scheme can be broken and the attacker will win again. Finally, we can also try to relocate the return address to uh, another stack and isolate to using different uh, approaches, including software-based and hardware-based. However, this shadow stack also has uh, many limitations. For software-based uh, shadow stacks, uh, the major limitation now is that in 64-bit world, we lack a good uh, isolation mechanism. Basically, in the segmentation in x86 is gone in 64-bit, and uh, access domain is also gone in 64-bit ARM processors. As a result, for security solutions, we have to choose between efficiency and security. So for solutions that opt for security, uh, such as using masking or a virtual address-based isolation, they are secure, but uh, they are slow. On the other hand, for solutions that opt for efficiency, such as using uh, random-based isolation, they are efficient, but uh, has been proven to be broken. For hardware-based uh, shallow stacks, the problem is uh, flexibility. So Existing uh, or proposed sh hardware-based shadow stack has problems supporting features like set jump, long jump, uh, deep recursion, and uh, sometimes kernel stacks. And uh, because they are specialized to protect only the return address, uh, it's very hard for them to re re reutilize them to protect other types of data, such as uh, uh, other co-pointers or non-control data. In addition, the data shadowing itself also adds uh, additional overhead. It breaks the, uh, data locality, requires additional steps to look up the shadow data, or requires reserved registers. At the same time, there is uh, unavoidable memory overhead. So to overcome these limitations, we propose HDFI. As a hardware-enforced isolation mechanism, HDFI is both secure and efficient. At the same time, we designed to be a generic uh, uh, data isolation mechanism. So it's very flexible, and as shown in our paper, we can utilize it to build uh, different kinds of uh, security model and uh, applications. We also design HDFI to be fine-grained, so as to really eliminate the need for data shadowing. Finally, to ease the, um, the adoption in practice, we try to, during our design, also try to minimize the hardware changes. So HDFI is uh, inspired by the data flow integrity work uh, published in OSI 06. 
This is similar to control flow integrity. Uh, data flow integrity enforces that the runtime data flow should not deviate from the model generated from static analysis. To enforce that, uh, DFI first uh, assigns every write instruction ID, and then it, it extends the memory model to record the, the ID of last writer. For example, if when we push the return uh, address onto the stack, we will modify the corresponding tag to record the last writer is, uh, say, line three. And if uh, there is a buffer overflow happens, we will record that uh, all the, oh, sorry, all the, uh, the last writer actually the line six. Sorry for this. And uh, then at every load instruction, we will check whether the uh, last writer is within the allowed set. For example, in this example, the only allowed uh, write instruction that to, over, to write uh, the return address would be line three. And if overflow happens, we will detect that and the exception will uh, be generated and the attack will be prevented. So HDFI includes uh, two parts of extensions. First is the uh, IC extension. So we extended the memory model to include uh, for one additional tag for every machine word. However, instead of uh, trying to support arbitrary lengths of uh, tag, we, only for, we found that in real applications, one bit tag is uh, enough. So in our company implementation, we only support one bit tag. We also uh, introduced the three new instructions to manipulate and check the tag. Store and set one, uh, we'll store a value to the memory and automatically set the tag to one. Load and check zero, we'll check if the tag is zero, and load and check one, we'll check if the tag is one. So we don't have explicit uh, load and uh, store and set zero instruction. Instead, we modified the uh, traditional or original store instruction to implicitly set the tag to zero. And for load instruction, we didn't change any semantic, so we can be backward compatible with uh, existing binaries. So for hardware uh, extensions, uh, our main modification is between the main processor core and the external memory. We extended the cache line to include the additional uh, attack bits so as to support our new instructions and reuse existing cache co coherent interconnect. And we're, because we cannot extend tag to main memory, which is DRAM, we also basically uh, store all the tag bits in a big uh, bitmap called tag table and introduce this uh, memory tagger to duplex uh, memory access to be one data access and one tag access. However, if we naively implement this, uh, it will introduce um, too high performance overhead because we doubled the memory access. To reduce the overhead, we introduced three um, optimization techniques. First is that we introduced the tag cache in the memory tagger to, uh, so as to exploit uh, the uh, locality of uh, memory access. The second one is called uh, tag value bit. It's based on the observation that uh, in during normal executions, most load instruction will not check the tag. So when we're refueling the uh, cache line, we don't always need to uh, fill up with value tag. And the last one is called the meta uh, tag table. This is based on the observation that during normal execution, most of the uh, bits in the tag table will actually be zero. So if uh, a line of the tag table is all zero, we will just uh, don't load it from the memory or don't rewrite it back to memory. So having this new feature, let's go back to our Stack Overflow uh, uh, example and see how we can use HDFI to defeat the attack. The implementation is actually quite simple. We just enforce one simple policy. That is, the return address should always be, uh, have tag zero. And this can be easily enforced by using SD set one to store the return address to memory. And when loading it, always use LD check one. Compared to existing hardware-based uh, shadow stack, our implementation is very simple and it's very flexible, can support uh, all of these features like uh, context saving, restoring deep recursion, modified return address, and the kernel stack. So besides the return address protection, to demonstrate the flexibility of uh, uh, HCFI, we also implemented uh, a variety of uh, other security applications, including uh, vtable protection and code point separation, which protects uh, the control data and uh, uh, standard C library enhancement and the data uh, uh, and the kernel protection, we protect uh, the integrity of non-controlled data. We also have one demonstration on how to utilize the HDFI to prevent uh, information leaks such as uh, the heartbleed attack. So we implemented um, HDFI based on the uh, RISC-V uh, rocket core generator with about 200 and 2,000 lines of code and uh, instantiated on the Xenix uh, FPGA board for evaluation. For the software side, we modified the toolchain to recognize our new instructions and uh, handle our new exceptions. 
And uh, for security applications, the implementation is quite simple. I will talk more uh, later. So for evaluation, we focus on three parts. The first part is uh, the effectiveness of our, of our optimizations. As shown in this table, when combining all three uh, optimizations, uh, the perf runtime performance overhead introduced by this new hard feature, hardware feature is actually negligible. As the second, uh, in second evaluation, we uh, evaluate the security mechanism we built with uh, some synthesized attack we built. And uh, as Redux shows, um, we can defeat all these attacks. Finally, and uh, most importantly, we evaluated how HDFI can change existing security solutions from uh, four aspects. First is security. So basically, being a hardware-enforced uh, isolation mechanism, our, the security guarantee uh, uh, based on HDFI is much better than most software, uh, pure software-based uh, isolation mechanism. The second one is the simplicity. Basically, by eliminating uh, the needs for data shadowing, the application built upon HDFI is much simpler. For example, our uh, return address protection application is way simpler than existing shadow stack implementations. And the third one is uh, uh, usability. We eva evaluated how easy it is to implement a new or uh, existing, um, or port existing security solution to, to be HDFI based. As shown in the table, the effort is uh, quite minimal. So for example, to implement shadow stack, we only like, uh, modified the four lines of code in LVM and uh, et cetera. Finally, also evaluated the efficiency of uh, HDFI-based solutions. And uh, we can see the performance uh, um, number is quite good. The only exception is for clan-based uh, uh, solutions because of the immaturity of the uh, current two chain, we can only compile with O0. And being uh, in order execution uh, core, it, we are quite sensitive. Our current implementation is very sensitive uh, to uh, compiler optimizations. That'd be all, and uh, any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Talk. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I agree this would work really great for x86, but in a more modern instruction set like ARM, many return addresses never find their way to memory. They sit in the link registers. Can you protect those as well? Oh, yes. I think uh, our, our current implementation is actually based on RISC-based uh, architecture. So that's uh, probably you didn't notice, uh, but actually in the example we showed, the Stack Overflow, we're using the stack is stored into the memory using uh, SD link register to uh, the stack. So actually we can, actually this, our, our current implementation actually is more like ARM and RISC-based instead of using push, using uh, call and uh, like return. Maybe I didn't uh, express myself very well. So yes. a leaf function on an instruction set with a link register never stores the return address. No, no, memory. but the, once you have a like, link register, is that you, when you call, you, you put the return address into the link register. But if, you have a, if you're not the tail call, if you're not the last call, right? right? If you have to call again, right? The link register then will be modified. So before that call, you still have to push know, link register onto the stack. The reality of dynamic execution is Everything's in a leaf function. That's where the dynamic vulnerabilities are. I, I, I think I couldn't agree with that based on my experience and uh, all the programs I compiled or tested. They always save link registers uh, to the uh, stack if they call additional uh, functions. But most of the time is in the leaf functions. Otherwise, you'd be calling functions more than you would be executing. Yes, yes. But, but we'll but take I, it offline. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, on this side, please, on the other side. Quick question. Yes. Um, so where does your um, overhead come from? I wasn't quite sure where you're generating all this performance overhead. So uh, the performance overhead is compared to the unmodified hardware. So because in this new hardware, we need to fetch, for example, especially we need to fetch the additional tag bit from the tag table. So that's uh, the main overhead, where the main overhead comes from. Because we cannot have in the, uh, the DRAM to be tagged. So for every memory access, we have to Duplicate the access. Right. So this is the main reason, uh, source of overhead. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yes. So um, on your slides, you, said you gave a number of different uses that this extra tag bit can be used for. Yes. Are those uses actually compatible with each other? And if not, then uh, how do you deal with the fact that one in compile might be use the tag bit for one purpose and then some other bit of code is compiled separately and uses it for a sep uh, separate uh, use? So uh, basically, uh, they are, I, I think they are compatible. Basically, the, the thing is um, we, we use HDFI to tag sensitive data. And all sensitive data will have different meanings. Uh, for example, return address will never overlap with, uh, for example, vtable pointers or function pointers. Or return address will never overlap with, uh, say, uh, UID in the kernel. So in, so in that way, if you look at, the, look at the memory, you will say, OK, all the sensitive data, they will be disjoint. And so all these uh, applications can be combined together to, uh, they will not affect each other. Well, I mean, couldn't it uh, return address be yes. overwritten by some code that it thinks it's writing a crypto key or something like that, which you also consider sensitive? Yes, yeah, so I think if you are uh, mentioning that, I think I have a, a one, oh, sorry. Ah. Could, could you uh, go to one slide uh, more or maybe? So I, have a, I actually have a backup slide talking about this. So all this uh, is based on DFI. So the thing is we have to rely on the data flow analysis. So basically we need to be able to control where the, uh, the pointer points to. So, if, uh, so therefore to defeat, I think to handle the case you are mentioning too, we need to probably need additional uh, runtime uh, memory uh, safety enforcement to make sure that OK, uh, you have this instruction, and you want to write it to a target. We need to make sure that the target actually the target you want to write to. Does this answer your question? So for example, you have a, uh, you have a constructor. Attacker may try to use this constructor to overwrite uh, the return address by overwriting a uh, return address with a uh, vtable pointer. But uh, so in, the, in that case, we probably will need additional uh, runtime uh, memory safety uh, a mechanism to prevent such cases. And actually, our original goal for HDFI is to be uh, assisting uh, memory safety mechanisms such as MPX so to achieve selective uh, protection. So we only need to isolate some, some more important sensitive data and apply memory safety only to those kind of data. OK. And uh, I also noticed that on your performance overhead chart, yes. there seemed to be one performance overhead which was negative. Oh, that's, I think it's for spec, it's, uh, there's natural fluctuations. So like one or I think 1% is within the uh, standard deviation. So it's uh, basically, I, I don't think it's uh, quite meaningful. Okay. It's just the, uh, the result of a one test case. Yeah.